Joining me now is Dr. Rick Bright, a member of President-elect Joe Biden's Coronavirus Advisory Board. He's the former head of the agency in charge of vaccine development at HHS, turned whistleblower who resigned in October protesting what was going on in the administration. Uh, Dr. Bright, it's very good to see you. And as a member of the President-elect's Advisory Board, how much of a problem do you see this lack of cooperation between the Trump administration and the incoming Biden team on the vaccine rollout and other measures on COVID? Andrew, thanks for having me today. It's a huge problem. Andrew, for having if you look today. around, you can problem. see how much this virus has gone out of control right now across the United States. We have more people getting infected today than we've had any time of this entire outbreak. We have good news in some in some ways that the vaccines are moving forward and we're getting good data. However, we have a lot of work ahead of us and to make sure that those vaccines and our other public health measures are rolled out seamlessly and transition from the uh, current administration to the, the new administration under President-elect Biden. There are many details, lots of coordination. Every day counts and every step counts. And we owe it to Americans to have a smooth transition to make sure we don't miss a step. The GSA is actually blocking us now from starting that planning and ensuring that we doing everything we can effectively and safely to make sure we have a good vaccine rollout. One of the concerns that I assume that you're addressing is the states don't have money. Now, the military is going to do a lot of the distribution, supposedly, but the, the final distribution, especially in rural areas uh, in the West and other areas, is left to the states and they're broke. Well, actually, we haven't really been able to see the full plan, whatever they have planned in this current administration. We have not yet been able to sit down side by side to see what they have planned, to see what happens after the military delivers the vaccine to a depot in a state. There are critical steps that happen after that vaccine arrives. That vaccine must move from that depot or that warehouse into the hands of doctors and nurses who will deliver and administer that vaccine. Vaccines themselves, don't save lives, but that vaccination process does. And you want to be vaccinated from people you know and you trust. And so there's a lot of details in that process, that last mile of that vaccination process that we need to make sure we're aligned with now so we can deliver it effectively when it comes time. Now, both the, the latest two vaccines that people have been focusing on, because they're the farthest ahead, uh, Pfizer and Moderna require two doses, and the Pfizer, as you know, uh, requires sub-zero uh, refrigeration, 100 degrees minus Fahrenheit. Officials say that a little more than 20 million people in this country could get their first shot before the end of the year. But the National Academy of Medicine is making this recommendation on who gets the vaccine first. I wanted to run through it with you and see if it tracks with what your advisory board believes is the way to go. Uh, phase 1A would include high-risk Americans like healthcare workers and the first responders. There's currently not enough doses for all of them. That would be in December, though, that first rollout, supposedly. Phase 1B covers those with underlying medical conditions and seniors living in congregate settings like nursing homes. Phase 2 would be 30 to 35 percent of the population covering critical workers like those in the food supply system, teachers, those over 65. Phase 3 would be 40 to 45 percent of the population, including most young adults and children. And phase four would protect everyone else, although there's been uh, no testing, I believe, by Moderna on pregnant women and children. So that those are two categories. Now, that seems to cover the landscape from December through April, May, June. But does, is that realistic, assuming that they get the emergency authorization and that the FDA then approves? Well, you can already begin to see how complicated and complex it is just to try to identify the right groups at the right time and make sure they get the right vaccine and get two doses of the same vaccine. So that is why we're pushing really hard to make sure we can sit down with the current administration as soon as possible to coordinate our efforts. Um, you know, what we're looking at now is um, what President Biden, what President-elect Biden has assured us is a, a, a plan for equitable distribution of the vaccine and the fact that he will listen to the scientists and the best science to make sure that we are administering that vaccine and rolling it out in an equitable way. And so some of that planning is we're happening now on our side, but we would love to sit down with the current team to make sure that we're not 
and wasting time and, and you know, doubling our work and doubling our effort when we can be focusing on many other things that we need to do in addition to vaccine administration to end this pandemic quickly. I want to ask you about Dr. Scott Atlas. Uh, we are experiencing the surge of COVID cases across the country. It's a big concern, especially for families as Thanksgiving approaches. But let's listen to what this Trump advisor, who is a radiologist, not an infectious disease expert. He's been um, disavowed by Stanford. He's on leave, but disavowed. They've tweeted today that he does not represent their views. This is what he had to say on Fox News last night. This kind of isolation is one of the unspoken tragedies of the elderly who are now being told, don't see your family at Thanksgiving. For many people, this is their final Thanksgiving, believe it or not. What are we doing here? I think we have to have a policy, which I have been advocating, which is a whole person, whole health policy. It's not about just stopping cases of COVID. We have to talk about the damage of the policy itself. And he also tweeted yesterday that people should rise up against Governor Whitmer's restrictions in Michigan. And he later said, uh, said that he wasn't advocating violence, but that has, of course, been such a volatile thing in, in, in Michigan. What do, you, what do you think about his advice? Because the president seems to be listening to him. Well, Andrew, I think you started out with the right description. He doesn't have any experience in infectious diseases or pandemic response or control. Um, he's not representing the view of Stanford, apparently. He's also not representing the view of a majority of scientists who have experience in this area. Um, we do not um, agree with many of the interesting or, or kind of crazy ideas that have come out of Dr. Scott, um, Dr. Atlas and, and his opinions. Um, we are putting together a team, as you've seen already, on the, the Biden-Harris um, COVID-19 advisory board, a team of, of experts, scientists, and we are putting together the best scientific plan that we can translate into a blueprint for action on day one of the Biden-Harris administration. And we're working really hard to get that everything in place today. Again, it would be a lot easier if we could sit down with the current administration and making sure we're aligned and coordinated so we can have a smooth transition. Well, we have to leave it there. Dr. Rick Bright, pleasure seeing you. Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.